morning, everybody, and welcome to another webinar with Maine Reviews and um, Care Salon Pro. So today we're going to be focusing on five simple ideas that we're going to share with you that will help you to survive these very quiet times. We know post holidays people struggle because of for various reasons, because of the Christmas spending, and they just don't have the disposable income that they had pre-holiday season. So we want to share with you some of these ideas today with the hopes that it will help to drive additional revenue into your business. But before we get into that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about who I am in, in the event you don't know who I am. My name is John Doucette. I'm a business development uh, manager with MainReviews.com. Um, I have over 30 years in the industry on many levels as a salon owner, as an educator, as a master franchisor, and uh, a consultant. Uh, so I think that um, some of the information that I have in, in my portfolio could be of benefit to you. And I'm confident that uh, what my colleague Scott's going to share with you will also be of great benefit. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce you to my partner, Scott. Scott, good morning. Good morning, John. How are you? I'm well. Um, good. Like John said, I have 30 years of experience as well. I'm a stock colorist currently. Uh, I've been a multiple salon owner, uh, educator, consultant. Um, I'm also the creator of HairSalonPro.com, which is the online community for hair salon owners, hairstylists, and cosmetology students looking to um, learn about new products and services that are available, trends that are up and coming. Um, also, um, it's just a great community for people to, to, to commune with each other and to learn from each other. So, That's great, Scott. Thank you so much. So. Uh... I think between the two of us, we have some uh, great ideas that we'll share with the, the audience today. And again, uh, with the hope being that they'll take it away and apply it. So uh, let's get started. So the, the five uh, tips, I guess, for the lack of a better word that we're gonna share with you today, or recommendations, are gonna be, first of all, talking about how to host an event. The second one is gonna be purging inventory, how to do that and the benefits of doing it. Contests and incentives. Combos and duos, uh, that's an interesting topic, so we'll get into that, and how to align operations. So let's talk about hosting an event. What is, what, what, if you host an event in your salon, what, what do you anticipate the benefits to be? Well, first of all, we know it's automatically going to drive sales. And as I said earlier, when we, we, uh, we opened, with these times where sales are dropping, because of the post holiday season, anything we can do to drive that adds value. So for sure events are gonna drive sales and they're gonna build credibility and authority in your community. And that's something that, uh, Scott, if you could just jump in here and take over that, because I know that's something that you do a lot of and uh, I'd like you to talk about it, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Um, you know, so authority, building authority in your community is basically just setting yourself up to be the go-to salon or service provider in the area. How do you do that? Um, through um, marketing, obviously, um, through throwing events, having events in your area and inviting your community of business, other business owners, um, your current clients, your current clients, friends and family, um, and educating them like you would your, yourself or your staff. And uh, so it's building authorities. It's showing that you are the go-to person in your community um, on uh, new trends, new products um, in the industry. And, and, you know, I do it through online as well. So by doing um, um, live events on Facebook, um, reaching customers, sending out emails, talking about new things that are coming up, just staying on the pulse of, of information to your, to your clients um, every day. So that's how you build authority in your community pretty much. That's great, Scott, and I'm glad that you bring up social media because we're going to be talking a lot about that today as we move forward and the importance of using those platforms to market the ideas that we're talking about. So some of the ideas that we're going to be talking about today is offering a class. And of course, whatever the class is that we're offering, it needs to be relevant. A bring a friend event, which I personally love. Invite your vendor, and we're going to talk about the benefits of that and how you should best approach it. And enhancing the, the salon experience. So one of the things that we talked about is purging uh, your inventory and, and the benefit of doing that. So Scott, you and I spoke about this before. I know that most salons have inventory sitting on the shelf that's been there for quite a while that, uh, for whatever reason it's not turning over. So by doing, by, by getting rid of that, uh, 
by creating baskets or however you choose to uh, present it. it. It generates that extra revenue, but not only that, it creates additional space in your retail area, which is prime real estate, to showcase uh, other products that you may be taking into consideration. Scott, do you want to talk a little bit about what your, your experience has been in doing uh, purging inventory? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, what, what moves product off the shelf is us as hairstylists and uh, salon owners. I mean, we have to be excited about the products that we're selling and that are on the shelf. We all have products sitting there that we probably haven't sold in, in months. Um, it's because we're excited about something new that's already came out, and now we're moved on to promoting that. So I would just say take a good inventory of what's on your shelves and your pro for your products. And, you know, if you haven't sold anything in a couple of months, then – Replace it with something that you're excited about. Put something out there that, that you're going to actually talk to your clients about and be more uh, enthused to, to put in their hands. Um, that, that For me, that's the key thing. Not only that, purchase inventory. In a slow, and we're in January and February when things tend to dip down a little bit more. You know, that revenue from the retail that you're sell, actually putting off the shelves, that's going to help get you through. It's going to help pay your rent. It's going to pay your utilities. You know, it's just that extra money that's going to keep you afloat through those slower times. And the other thing is, too, Scott, you know, uh, of course, you're going to have to discount it a little bit. But it, it's not a, I don't see that as being a big issue. You're still going to have a margin on it. And uh, if it's just sitting on the shelf there collecting dust, it, it makes no sense. So compromise your margin a little bit and be creative. Like, you know, create a really nice basket. Um, and Scott, I... It, you and I had a conversation the other day. You made mention, which I thought was a great idea, to incorporate gift cards with that. Absolutely, yeah. Gift cards is a great way to generate extra revenue um, in, the, in the down times, and any time of the year, really. I mean, we, I don't think we think of it enough, but you know, that's just that's just free money. Honestly, somebody's giving you money for a piece of plastic that they're going to render at another day, or they're giving it to a friend and family member. You know, throw a gift card in there. Do like, I don't know, like a shampoo, a conditioner, and a 25 or $50 gift card in there. And, you know, automatically, I mean, you got 50% mark. You say you discounted the product at 30%. There's 30% plus, you know, a full um, $50 gift card. You're looking at an extra $80. Do that 10 times in a week. You know, and the numbers are there. The other thing is, too, Scott, uh, not that we wouldn't want everybody to redeem their gift card. But uh, statistics say that on average, 11% of people that purchase gift cards never redeem them. Yeah, and that's funny, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, you know, I've worked with salons where at the end of the year, um, when we do a reconciliation on their, on their um, sales report, and we identify, for example, that we might have sold $3,000 in gift cards over the course of the year, but of those $3,000, less than $2,000 in some cases, were actually redeemed. So when you look at that, that's like you just said, that's instant money in your till for a service that you're going to be offering down the road. And there, like I said, not that we wouldn't want everybody to come, but there's a possibility that they may not even show up. So it's a great idea. So consider um, incorporating that into your gift basket. Let's talk about other contests and incentives. So a contest that I that I I, I find works really really well. It takes a little bit of time to explain it, but so create a board, if you will, and put it on, in your staff room and identify the three metrics that you measure your staff by. So usually that's sales, re, service sales, I'm sorry, retail sales and referrals. So I'm sure that you're all tracking how many clients each one, if, if you're a salon operator and Scott, in a little bit, I'm gonna ask you to speak on if you're a suite renter, which you are, how this impacts on you. So, but as a salon owner, you know, you take those three metrics, so service sales, retail sales, and referrals, and track them over a four to six week period. You decide, and then provide incentives for your client, for your staff uh, at the end. So you can do, you know, at the end of the four or six week period, you can do a prepaid uh, visa, whatever you decide. But what that does is it's going to boost the morale in your salon after, you know, now that we've kind of slid into a quiet, a quiet time. And it's going to enrich the salon culture. It's going to create that energy that you want. And for sure, it's going to drive sales. Um, and then at the end of every week, you know, you look at those numbers and you identify your staff members that have grown whatever, in which category, whether it's, like I said, the service sales, retail sales, or the, the referrals. 
and celebrate those with them and celebrate them not only with that staff member, but acknowledge them in front of their peers, because that does an incredible, uh, it just, it, it adds a great energy to the salon and it empowers those other staff members to work even harder. So Scott, if you could just speak a little bit, if you don't mind, on the, uh, on the suite, because I'd be curious to know how this translates to them. Yeah, I'm just going to back up just a little bit. And, and, and competition is great, man. I mean, we love, I'm a very competitive person. So, you know, inside the, uh, the salon, you don't want to do something that's competitive, you know, going to disrupt the, the environment. You want to make it a positive um, when you run these contests and things with your staff. Um, you want to make it positive and make everybody a winner at, at the end of the day. You know, there is a pop first. Everyone is a winner. I, we are in that kind of a society today. So just keep that in mind. But, as a, you know, I'm in competition with myself. Like, I'm one of those people that are very goal incentive, very, I, I track everything. I put everything on pen and paper or on a computer. And so for me, being a, a booth renter or a suite renter, um, I, it's my job. It's my responsibility to, to, uh, to get inside of my head and, and track things and, and go. So for me, I have a 12 month calendar, which we'll talk more about a little bit. I have a 12 month calendar every month of what my promotion might be. Or it may not, I don't discount. So a lot of times, so it doesn't have to be about discounts and stuff. It's just about putting something together. Like my emails are already set up for the month to go out automatically. My marketing plan um, plans are already going out. It's all my stuff that I have all planned out for a 12 month period. So, but for me, I have to sit down daily and go look at my books and say, okay, um, you know, this is, I want to take a trip to San Diego next month. So to do that, I'm going to sit down. This is how much more, revenue I'm going to need to generate to make that happen. So I'll sit down and say, okay, here's what's on my book. Susan's getting a haircut and a highlight. I'm going to add a deep conditioning treatment um, to that service today. So, um, or um, so-and-so's getting a haircut. I'm going to talk about a 10 pack highlight to add on to her. So, you know, I'm looking at those clients in a slower time. We have especially a little bit more time with clients. So take, <laughs> take that time and really just give more attention and more value to them and stuff. So for me, I have to be more responsible as an individual. I don't have somebody around me that I'm that's that's you know coaching me or motivating me. I have to do that individually. So, and Scott, you bring up a really great point. I know with the salons that I've been working with, especially lately, they they say to me, John, I don't want to discount my services, and I don't feel that people should feel they have to because if you're providing a quality service and you're providing a customer experience there really is no need to discount the service. But what there is the need for is to enhancing that experience, however you need to, however you can, and however you need to do it. And talking about these kinds of incentives uh, and contests, this adds great value to your salon and it, it creates a platform where you don't have to discount in any way because you're providing a, a discount on the, uh, on the product. So it's just something to think about. So let's talk about combos and duos. Um, it's, Scott, I'm sure you'll agree with me. There's just, there's so many, there's so many things you can do. Uh, for example, you can take, if you look at the graphic here, for example, you could, you could bundle up a blow dryer, a brush, and a styling aid. And, and you can put it in a basket, or you can, you can buy these really nice satin bags and put them in and uh, market it that way. And again, you know what, you may decrease, you might drop your margin a little bit, but at the end of the day, you're still moving that product that was sitting on the shelf collecting dust, and it creates more of a shopping opportunity for your client. Um, Scott, is this something that you do in the suites? Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, especially with product, you know, I'll, I'll you know, I'll shampoo and conditioner combos. I mean, there's so many that already, a lot of the companies come out with quarterly and monthly, and you can look if the product line does that already, but if not, you can create your own incentives and own, own um, um, combos and duos and stuff. And we talked about this the other day, John, with the doing the events, maybe doing a blow dry event um, in the salon and marketing and, and, and for like four or five weeks out and then putting, um, getting with the distributor and saying, Hey, look, I'm going to do this big event. I'm hoping, looking to get like 10, 15 people. So maybe interested in buying like 10 or 15 blow dryers, flat irons. Um, what kind of discount could you, you know, come up with to, create this so that I can sell these in packages, you know, and it, it doesn't hurt to ask, you know, you, it's all about the relationship you have with your distributor and talking to them and finding out same thing with products. Hey, look, I want to put like a shampoo and conditioner, um, you know, kit together. What do you suggest? It's 
you know, it's however you want to do it. But at the end of the day, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Well, the other thing is too, Scott, like you said, when you, when you work with your vendor and if you buy, like you said, 10 or a dozen of each, the likelihood is they're going to give you a discount on it. And that's going to allow you to increase your margin. But I think going back to something that you mentioned earlier is the importance of the calendar and entering those events in it. So for example, let's say we were doing, um, one of my favorite things to do is swing into spring. I don't know if you've ever done that, but so swing into spring allows you to kind of tap into the market as it relates to potential weddings that are coming up, graduations. And by creating these, these baskets or duos that we're talking about, like the blow dryer and the flat iron, or the, the uh, blow dryer and a curling iron or a wand, and then marrying product into that, by putting that in your calendar and identifying a date, I'm sorry, a specific time that you're gonna do that in the salon, then you know, you've already planned it out. You've met with the vendor, you've negotiated the price of the tools, it's in your calendar. So now, really all you have to do is market it. And, and the best way to market, and I know Scott, you agree with this, is all the platforms that exist on social media. And for those of you that are on main reviews with us, you can use the Mindshare bulletin board to showcase it. Uh, the other thing is I would recommend that for every station, every styling station you have, you have some kind of a, like a little sign there, tastefully done, talking about the promotion that you have coming up. So that it's a trigger for your, your staff to be talking about it. But it also raises awareness with your clients, and then they start to ask questions. So, Scott, let me ask you, in a suite setting like you're in, how would you market something like this? Uh, for me, I, I, I you know, I, I, I am a marketer by nature as well. So, you know, for me, like I have, I keep a uh, Facebook ad dripping, you know, monthly. So, for like $5 a day, I, I'm completely dripping to like a five mile radius around my salon, 10 mile radius to my salon. And so, you know, I may switch that up, that add up, it could be something generic, but every month I kind of switch it up. So like if there's a product or, or that I want to focus on, I'll have that product in there and where they can get it. And then also services. So I'm always dripping Facebook ads, which is really simple to do. Um, and then email marketing, I, I touch base. I send out emails maybe twice a week, you know, once in the beginning of the week, once at the end of the week, um, you know, running some kind of promotion or, or talking about some product that, that I'm excited about or, um, you know, reminding people to get on the books and not to wait too long. So it's all social media and, and email marketing for me mostly. But also, you know, I get in my clients' ears as well. and I let them know what I'm working on, you know, while they're in my chair. And, you know, I ask them to send in friends too as well. You know, hey, look. This is what I'm getting ready to do. I'm driving, you know, I'm, I've got some, I'm really excited about these new trends. You know, I'd love some of your friends to come visit me, so. And you know what, Scott? Uh, I'd like to back up a little bit and talk about the, one of the events we made mention of out of the, um, one of the earlier slides, and that was the Bring a Friend event. Um, or you and I had, in a previous webinar we did, uh, we referred to it as Friends with Benefits. Mm -hmm. And that's such a great opportunity because I think oftentimes salon owners, for whatever reason, or, and for stylists and colorists, they don't capitalize on it. I'm always amazed how people will spend a lot of money on different types of marketing uh, campaigns, you know, door, door knockers and flyers and adverts and magazines and whatever the case is. And, and they're, not, they're not leveraging what, the opportunity they have right in front of them, which is the... Uh, their client base. So like you were just saying, you know what, if you ask your client for a referral and they do that, they, the cost to you is nothing. All you've done is had a conversation with them. So yeah, yeah I think it's really important that we, we really impress that on the audience today that, you know what, leverage the, the uh, client base that you have to bring in new, new people. And then to, uh, to host a friend with benefits or bring a friend event, there's so many ways you can do that, depending on the type of salon that you have. Um, you, can, uh, you can showcase a particular product. Uh, you can showcase uh, a particular style. Maybe you're going to showcase a new hairstyle. Whatever it is, as long as it's appealing and it has interest and value to the client, uh, then the likelihood is that they will come and they are going to bring those, um, those friends. And I would strongly suggest if you do that, 
make sure that you have your staff in place so that they can be conducting consultations with those new folks that are coming through the door because that's a great opportunity to do an educational class with them to do a hair analysis with them make some recommendations and it gives gives you an opportunity to maybe even book that client for a future service so Scott, I've just recently started doing some work with suites, and I'd be curious to know how you would market something like that, a bring a friend event in a suite setting. Yeah, you know, I think, John, when you're running any kind of business, it's of three things. It's systems, structures, and planning. So, you know, for me, like, I have systems in place that I've been doing for years that I live by, and they're kind of just embedded in me and, and the way that I do things. And, and when I'm in a conversation with a client, they just kind of normally come out, you know? So automatically, I'm automatically asking those kind of things. But again, you know, um, we talked in the previous webinar just about um, uh, asking for referrals, asking for um, reviews and things like that. I think, you know, you've got to be doing it in the side of the salon with your clients, but also email marketing works great for me, man. I mean, I couldn't ask for, I get so much um, uh, response and email opens that, then people love it. They see your name and they see the salon. It's like, Oh wait, Scott's emailing me. Let's see what's up. You know? So, and they'll do it. If I ask somebody to do a review for me, they'll go and do it. I mean, that's how I grow my business. So, you know, it's, it's the power of asking, but planning too. don't wait until right now we're talking about thriving in the slow times. If you're if you're if you're doing steps and you're every month on a plan, you won't have a slow time. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Is that uh, I'm pretty lucky that I have systems and structures planned out monthly that I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to stress in the slow times because I'm automatically. I, I mean, I never talk to my clients during the week. They automatically go on my website, they book, and I, I all I have to do is walk in and do their hair every day. You know, so I'm pretty lucky in that sense. But I think you know it's. It's, it's putting plans in motion. If you're not, if you're just sitting there and you're not doing it or you say, Hey, I'm busy enough now. I don't really need to worry about it. And it's not November and December. And then come January, you're like freaking out because you don't have anybody on your books. It's because you didn't plan ahead of time. You know, I have to tell you, Scott, I work with a lot of stylists and colorists and salon owners through main reviews. And, and, and I see so, uh, so much opportunity that's missed so much potential revenue that there for the taking and for whatever reason they're not um, they're not capitalizing on that so um, those folks that, that are in our listening audience today I want you to really take a step back and just look at your database whatever that may be and look at ways that you can leverage that database to grow your business even further whether it's through email campaigns or text marketing whatever the case may be because that opportunity is sitting right there in front of you and it can translate into a significant amount of revenue if you leverage it, but only if you leverage it. Right. So now let's talk about operations. And Scott, this is where we're going to, uh, what can operations do for you? Well, it, it, it's going to allow you to be organized, for one thing, which is extremely important. And, you know, it goes back to the conversation we had earlier as it relates to the, uh, to the calendar. Because I think a lot of people don't understand the value that that calendar has because in many ways your your calendar becomes like your bible um i know for me everything goes in it i use my google calendar and i know what i'm doing every day and so i think going back, especially when it comes to events and maybe scott i don't know if this is something that you've done but i know this is something a practice that i had um would sit down in early january with the team and identify for the next year what the events were going to be and who was participating who was going to participate and at what level were they going to participate uh now you said to me that you you have a calendar that you use on a daily weekly basis it's the same pr same principle i'm guessing for a suite right yeah absolutely you know i mean it's again individual or a team you know the 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 difference is, is a team, you know, you have multiple people that are working together to, to bring that boat to the, to the top, you know? So for me, uh, I have to rely on myself and it's just myself, you know, myself as well. So, yeah. I mean, so you just have to take the action to do it. But I think you, if you're a team, you need to have a hundred percent participation though. I do believe that. Absolutely. And, and, you know, one of the suggestions we made here as well was doing a photo shoot and posting that, um, and I know, Scott, that that's an area of expertise for you, uh, social media. 
But what I'm seeing a lot of is, um, especially stylists and colorists, they're doing befores and afters and posting on Instagram. Um, and that for sure has value, but there's other platforms that you can post on as well. And I know that we have this one particular salon with main reviews and going back to the Mindshare bulletin board, they post almost on a daily basis. And it's interesting to me how their gallery has become so large and their traffic has increased significantly. And I think at the end of the day, that is our objective. No matter whether a stylist, a colorist, salon owner, suite renter, or an uh, chair rental, at the end of the day, we're all looking to get more bums and seats and more money in the tail. And anything that we can do to accomplish that. So I, I'm thinking that some of the things that we've talked about today, Scott, lends itself to that. Yeah, definitely. I think hairdressers today, especially some of the, the younger ones, they've bought all in on Instagram, you know, I think, John, and Instagram, because it's much a, more of a visual um, platform. Um, I think a lot of people put all their ducks in one, you know, which I don't agree with. I think you need to spread it out and use ultimate, a lot of different multimedia things. But, um, but you know, it is a very visual. So why not do a photo shoot, you know, it can be daily too, man. Like set up a little booth in your salon and do like, you know, some photos after you style and do some makeup on one of your clients or something. Um, if you have the time to do that, if not come together as a team, do a photo shoot, um, put together, everybody gets to put a model together, do like 10, 12 shots of each model and then use those, those, um, those photos throughout your marketing throughout the year for different things, whether it be a product promotion or be, um, uh, a service, you know, or, 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 or a class or a giveaway, whatever you want to use them for, you can use them all day. You can use them on email, you can Facebook ads with them, um, add some video to it too, you know, do a couple of videos while they're inside that as well. Video sells really well online. So, um, so I think it is, I think that's really, really cool, but also there's lots of email automations out there, softwares out there. If anybody wants to know about any of the online stuff, just reach out to me on my email. Um, and I'd be happy to help you out with it. But um, I think having a calendar is the way to go, though. The other thing is yeah. Scott, that I think we need to uh, spend some time talking about is the importance of continuing education and leveraging that to your advantage. Um, I know I have a lot of stylists and colorists that participate in various types of um, competitions that have, you know, national and international recognition. And international and recognition. Anytime you do that, anytime you do that, um, that, that will create that, that, great opportunity for the um, for the operator to be able to market themselves on social media. Say, look, you know, I've just done this extra certification. You know, I've learned this new skill. Whatever the case may be, so it gives you bragging rights, basically. And I, based on my own personal experience, clients love that. They they have such respect and value for their operator, their stylist, or colors that continue to participate themselves because. I'm sorry, continue to educate themselves because they know that they're current in their trends. They're current in the information that they're providing the client. And that, that's, that's, that's what the expectations are today by the client. So. Yeah, John, I want to touch base on that a little bit. Um, you know, as you know, I was an educator for many years um, for product companies and stuff like that. And, and um, I, I won't mention any of them, but I have. And so I think education, we've taken a big dip in, you know, now, with the online, everybody just goes online. They're looking at, you know, read the blog post or they watch a video online. And so I think, I think get back in, get back out there, take a class, go to an academy, go to a show, get your hands in it, experience it, get that experience of, of doing it and taking a class. Don't just rely on seeing what's just happening online or, you know, somebody's posting a live video of somebody doing a haircut online, which those are great. I'm not down at it. I think it's amazing, but, get in there, get, get in a relationship with other educators and stuff, go out there and do it. And then, like you said, while you're there in the class, do some, do a live feed and show your clients on your page. Hey, look, I'm right now, I'm at the well, Wella Academy and I'm taking a great class. This is my instructor. Um, this is what we're working on today. I'm excited to get back to the salon to talk to you about what we're doing. Get back. We need to get back into that, that, that realm of like, um, that, personal interaction, not just relating just online with that. I'd like to just take this opportunity to thank everybody that participated today. And, uh, and especially you, Scott, we always, uh, I always enjoy these webinars when I have the opportunity to do them with you. Uh, there will be another one coming down the pipe of the, probably in the next couple of three weeks. Um, we'll identify what that's going to be. 
Um, if you want to reach out to either Scott or myself, here's all our contact information. Um, please don't hesitate and we can provide you with tips and tricks or if you, know, if you want to know about anything about what we talked about today, don't hesitate to reach out. So again, Scott, if there's anything else you'd like to add, otherwise I think uh, we can wrap it up. Yeah, guys, if I just give you a final ending here, just, you know, start today. It's a new year. I wish you all well in 2020, and I hope that today you'll start planning for the next year. So this time next year, um, you will be thriving in January and February and in the slower times. Create that calendar and plan and, and uh, take action. So, again, you can reach me on my email at scottahairsalonpro.com and Instagram and Facebook, which is on the screen. You're welcome to follow, and I'd love to, to reach out and meet with some of you guys offline. Thanks so much, Scott. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for everybody that participated in the webinar today, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.